Welcome to the Crosslight Nova TCAD tutorial. In this video, I will guide you step by step to create a simulation project for a gallium nitride power hemp. This is the hemp structure we are going to simulate. We choose silicon as the substrate material since it's cost effective for power electronics applications. A 20 nanometer nucleation layer of aluminum nitride is used to reduce the stress caused by the lattice mismatch. That's followed by a 2 micron gallium nitride buffer and a 30 nanometer gallium nitri uh, aluminum gallium nitride barrier layer. The 2DEG channel, that's the two dimensional electron gas channel, sits close to the top surface of the gallium nitride layer. The source and drain form an, an ohmic contact with the gallium nitride, and the gate metal sits on top of the algan to form a Schottky contact. From the Nova TCAD main window, we start the Simu C Supreme program to perform the process simulation steps before we do anything else. We're going to select the .in file which has been previously edited to contain all the process steps for this device. The first step of the process simulation is to define the materials that we're going to use since not all of them are uh, recognized by C Supreme by default. In this example, we need to define six materials. You'll notice we define gallium nitride twice, and that's because we want to define the quantum confinement in only part of the gallium nitride layer. So the one, the, the material label gallium nitride at QW is the upper layer where we're going to find the 2DEG. We're going to use two different types of metal in the simulation. Gold is reserved for the source and drain, and metal one, which is just a, a placeholder name, is used for the Schottky gate metal, and that allows us to uh, control the uh, work function or affinity that we're going to use for that contact. The substrate mesh is defined so that we concentrate the mesh in the area where interesting physics is happening. So we have a denser mesh on top and a sparser mesh near the bottom. The silicon substrate is defined as p-doped and the concentration is at 1 e14 per cubic centimeter. Because we've previously run the structure, uh, we have some output files that we can play with. And what we can do is we can double click on them to open it in Crosslight View. And here we view the structure at the current process stage. We can show the mesh density, we can show other parameters also regarding the material we've deposited or the doping profiles that we've had. After we initialize our substrate, we deposit our aluminum nitride nucleation layer. We do that with a deposit statement and a thickness of 0.02 micron. The mesh for that layer is defined in two, in two different ways. The horizontal mesh lines are given by the mesh layer state, the parameter, and we only have two horizontal, uh, horizontal lines for that layer. The vertical lines, they're inherited from the substrate and the previous layers. Note that, uh, note that every statement in C Supreme has built-in help uh, that goes along with it. So you can just click on a line and look at the wizard to see all the parameters and what they do. We also output the structure at different steps and after the aluminum nitride aluminum nitride nucleation layer is deposited, we've got a structure file that we can open in Crosslight View and we can zoom in on the top and view what the result looks like. The deposit statements for the next layers follow the same rules as before, but we're going to be a little bit tricky here because we want finer control over our mesh. So we're going to separate the deposit of the gallium nitride in two steps. A first step of a 1.9 micron and 8 mesh lines, and a second step which uh, 0.09 micron and 6 mesh lines. So that allows us to put more mesh or denser mesh near the uh, 2DEG region. After we <coughs> do our deposit, we're going to have a struct statement and that allows us to uh, output the structure so we can take a look at it. There's one last gallium nitride layer we also need to deposit and this one has a special name 
because that's where we're going to do our quantum confinement. So even though it's a bit redundant, we've also the output the structure after the deposition of our various galenitride layer. And we can view the result here and the shape of the mesh that we've altered by using the two different deposition steps. So we have the option here to uh, define a, a position label that will be used by the APSIS device simulator. Uh, this is used to refer to a position and the label is useful because it will automatically update the position of this reference based on the process steps that you define. So now we can deposit our Algan barrier layer. Again, we divide the deposition into two steps in order to control the mesh density. The lower 5 nanometer portion has a denser mesh because it's closer to the 2 DEG. And then we have a sparser mesh in the 25 nanometer upper portion that's closer to the gate uh, contact. Just like before, we can take the lo look of the structure after we deposit our Algan barrier layer. Next, we're going to use a mask to protect a region between 1.5 and 8.5 micron. And then we're going to etch the algan to create the holes for the source and the drain. After this step, we're going to remove the photoresist and deposit gold to fill those holes. So the really important process step here is the etching of the holes where we're going to do the deposit for the gold uh, afterwards. So we've got output the structure file that we can open in Crosslight View. And if we zoom near the top, we can see that we've created holes where we'll deposit our metal. Next, we're going to define masks again to protect the source and drain. And we're going to etch the gold away to remove, uh, to re remove it everywhere except the the source and drain contacts. We after, after that, we have another pro the metal deposition steps that follows the same process as before, but this time we're going to deposit the gate metal. After we've deposited our gold, we can view the structure. And we can see that our holes have been filled in. And now we're done with our process simulation. The final step is to define the export of the mesh structure to Apsis. So to start the process simulation, all we need to do now is just click this green start button. After the process simulation is finished, we can right click on the structure file and open it in Crosslight View to see the results. From the Nova TCAD main window, we start the Simuapsis program, which will run the device simulation. From the file menu, we open the project corresponding to the current voltage or the IV solution file. The .sol file has several commands. The first one is the use macro file, which is used to define material parameters from the user. In this case, the my.mac file contains the material parameters corresponding to the metal one material we use as the gate metal. The convention command defines the sign of the current. So this is all a question of perspective and we define the current as positive if it flows inwards as seen uh, inwards into a contact as seen from the inside of the device. One of the most important characteristics of the galenitride material system is the polarization charge and that comes from the wordside crystal structure of the material. So we have this model built in into Apsis, but in practice, there's often a deviation between the charges we need to fit the experiments and the value that's predicted by theory. 
So here we use a screening factor of 0 0.8 to say that we use 80% of the theoretically predicted value in the simulation. The interface traps are placed on top of the algan layer to mimic the surface states that we observe in experiment. So here we define a, a donor type trap and with a certain trap density of 4E17. Uh, Abscess uses uh, SI units, so that's a density in meters squared. We also define the energy level of the trap that's measured in electron volts from the conduction band edge. With the load mesh statement, we're going to import the mesh structure we created in Apsis. We're also going to instruct the simulator to save extra data that we're going to use to plot the quantum well states and do some AC analysis in the post-processing stage. The material information from C Supreme is loaded inside Apsis with this include command. We load the material 2D.sol file that's been created by Apsis during the export stage. And this declares different things, including the equivalence between the Supreme materials and the Apsis materials, the libraries that contain the material parameters for all our uh, materials, and then also the active region declaration corresponding to the quantum confined uh, channel. Next, we're going to define contacts based on the material numbers from our material 2D.sol file. It's important to know that even though we dep deposited gold and metal one in C Supreme, we don't yet have a contact when it comes to abscess. For abscess, a contact is a mesh boundary condition where you can apply voltage or current. And <clears throat> by default, we're, uh, the contacts are ohmic. So here we're going to define three contacts that are applied to the metal. And we're going to label contact number one as the source, contact number two as the gate, and contact number three as the drain. In addition to that, we're going to define the work function of the gate metal. And that allows us to control the boundary condition between the algan barrier and the gate metal. And that defines our shock key contact. Since we have an, an omega boundary, uh, we want to have the a source and drain region in the gallium nitride heavily doped in order to do that. So we're going to define uh, doping profiles with a concentration of 1E25 per cubic meter. So it's 1E19 per cubic centimeter. Now we're going to define the models for our Schrodinger solution we're going to turn on the self-consistent updates so that the piezoelectric field alters the shape of the potential for the 2DEG uh, quantum region. We're going to turn off the updates after a certain point for numerical reasons. We sacrifice a little bit of the physics accuracy when we do that. Next, we use the aligned complex to position our quantum region inside the structure we imported. The modified quantum well determines which solution we're going to keep from our Schrodinger solver. So in the quantum confined region, we've got a, a problem that's limited to three layers. The uh, gallium nitride uh, substrate, well, or at least buffer, the gallium nitride region that serves as the 2 dEG channel, and the algan barrier layer. So here we are telling the software that we don't want to keep artificially confined states that may occur in the algan barrier layer. We want to keep the states inside the 2 dEG region. And finally, for this part, we turn on the bulk treatment of the holes. And that's because we're working inside a unipolar problem and we can ignore any quantum confinement that occurs for the holes. One of the goals of a good hem design is trying to limit the leakage current. And that means you want to avoid current that flows outside of the 2 dEG channel. So to do that, you want to use a semi-insulating buffer layer, and we model that in abscess by using traps. So we define p-type traps with a 3E23 per cubic meter density, and that means 3E17 per, uh, e per cubic centimeters. We also define the capture cross-section of the traps 
as 1e minus 17 per meter squared. And again, that converts to 1e minus 13 per centimeter squared. We define the traps in the gallium nitride buffer layer, which is material number 3, but we don't define those traps in the uh, quantum well gallium nitride region, which is defined material number 4. The next step is to configure our nonlinear Newton solver and determine how we're going to uh, achieve convergence. So <coughs> we define the damping step and that's a limit on the size of the solution updates between Newton, Newton iterations. We typically want to use uh, relatively small values to prevent the solver from oscillating. So that yields slower but more stable convergence. We also want to define the criteria for convergence. So we have the res tall, which is the, the uh, residue on the equations, and the var tall, which is the size of the uh, updates of the guess to the Newton solver. So in general, what we want in, for a solution is something that is both accurate, that means it has a very small residue, and stable, which means that the variables uh, don't change very much between Newton iterations. The next commands deal with the flow of the simulation. Every simulation has to start with the thermal equilibrium case and that means that we have zero volt on all the electrodes and the net current is also zero everywhere in the device. Numerically this means that we solve only the Poisson equation and the current continuity equations are simply not relevant. The Fermi level is flat and zero everywhere in the device. Afterwards, we apply a scan command to increase the voltage to the, a particular electrode. So here we're going to ramp the drain voltage, which is the voltage on electrode number 3, to 30 volts. We also apply the time as a second variable that's, that's increased at the same time as the voltage. And that introduces a transient term that, that helps with convergence in this case. Now we're ready to start the simulation, so we're going to do it in the same way as C Supreme by clicking the green start button and selecting our input file. After we're done with the simulation, we can create our .plt file which will have the instructions for plotting and post-processing. So we, uh, we have to do different things in the PLT file. The first, uh, first thing is we have to tell the software where to get the output data that's going to plot. And we do that using the get data statement. So you have two kinds of data that you can specify. You have the scan data, which is everything that's relating to uh, a change versus the applied bias. So that means uh, current, voltage, that kind of thing. And the XY data is for things that are happening inside the device on the mesh level. So this is for when you want to plot the band diagrams, the internal current flow, the potential distribution, that kind of thing. The data sets are corresponding to the dot out files that we have as an output. And they're numbered from one for the equilibrium and then every time you output a scan, uh, it increases this number. Uh, you can also plot additional data if you want in the, by specifying in the scan statement that you want additional <coughs> outputs, uh, output at intermediate bias values. When it comes to the uh, actual plotting commands, we have plot scan, and here we're plotting the drain current versus the drain uh, voltage. And for the structural data, the plot1d plots the electron concentration and the band on the 1d cut vertically across the channel. To view the results of our .plt file, all we have to, need to, all that we have to do is to click the uh, plt button here. And by default, we're set up that the output will be st stored in a, po a PostScript file, which will open automatically. So here we can see our drain current versus drain voltage, 
and on the next pages you'll have the electron concentration and the band diagram. Next we're going to simulate the device breakdown. Uh, this particular hem design is a normally on device so we need to bias the gate to turn off the channel and then ramp up the drain voltage to simulate the breakdown. So this is a separate set of uh, bias in our, uh, in our simulation flow. So we have a different out input file which is hemptbv.salt that was created for this purpose. Pretty much all the settings are the same uh, between the two .salt files. Everything that's related to the traps, the self-consistent parameters and so forth. The main difference is that we're going to define the impact ionization parameters for our materials. So here we use the Chinweb model with numbers that we've gotten from the literature. After the simulation is over, we can do the same thing as before and create a .plt file corresponding to that particular simulation. So just like before, we load up the data and we apply the uh, different plotting commands that we want to see. So here we see our IV curve uh, at, during the breakdown as long with the current in logarithmic scale and we can see the potential distribution inside the device and the uh, localized electric field. In addition to the PLT system we also have cross light view available to view these results. So just like before we select our output files and open it up in cross light view. So the <coughs> we first see the device structure but then we can select additional variables so we can start with by showing the differential potential so that's the internal voltage drop in the device rather than the uh, potential of the Poisson equation. We can show the electric field magnitude And we can also show the impact ionization rates. In summary, Crosslight Nova TCAD is a very powerful tool that combines uh, process and device simulation and can be used to model gallium nitride hem devices. The goal of this video was simply to introduce some of our basic capabilities and for more information I would invite you to visit our website at www.crosslight.com. We have a free trial version available and this, uh, the example files used in this video will be uh, included along with that, that free trial. Thank you for your attention.